Tara, have you been decorating Dan? No. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you, what do you mean? I have a growth. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> uh, how are you this week? He's a little hippo. We're doing okay. Still mm. juggling fragile cat egos. <laughs> yeah, is, is Simba? Simba seems to be acclimating very well. Yes, unless we let him out of his room and then he tends to chase the other cats and they hiss at him and... It, We've like we've hit a plateau where they're like, this is how well we're gonna get along and no better. And we're like, no, we need better. And they're like, fuck you. So we're working on it. We I got some calming treats that I've been giving everybody. We're we're working on it. Oh well. Simba just sits at his little gate and cries, and it's sadder than lame is. And I'm not supposed to go in there when he cries because Sim Simba is very possessive of me and very demanding, and I have to let him know that he is not in charge. I mean, he's a cat, but you know. How's that going for you? It's hard. <laughs> you haven't heard him cry. It's so fucking sad. I have to put up with Loki. All right. Yeah, that's pretty sad. And we, and Loki is, plus his freaking heart, we have to keep Loki out of here, out of the studio, because this is where Grady's food and water is. And if we let Loki in here, he will devour he will all. But Loki acts like when he's shut out of this room and has the entire rest of the house that he can roam freely, when he's not allowed in here, he acts as though he's been locked away. Yeah. Well, that's part of it is, the room Simba lives in, Peggy used to spend all day sleeping in the window of that room. So she's still very offended. That's that my room. Room in the whole house. That was my room. She doesn't have access. Like they're really feeling oppressed. And <sighs> yesterday Simba chased Dottie behind the couch. And so Peggy's extra mad because she's like, that's my sister. Fuck you. Boy. Solidarity. Yeah, we're. we're and they are. They're a fucking unit. Like, well, Ryan, I just want them all to be happy. In time. Everybody, ah. everybody say a prayer to Saint Gertrude. She is the patron saint of cats. <laughs> that, that my little, my little commune here will, will find peace. All right. Well, it is time for the nonsense. And this this is one of those weeks where it's it's it really is the kind of moment where you'll just grab somebody and go, what 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 the fuck is wrong with you? Really? Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And we're gonna start with another one of these. This is I'm I'm particularly annoyed with with this story um for a number of reasons um especially one of which being we're about to fly this week for yeah. con bravo um also because th this you know we keep saying 911 is not you know uh, is not customer, it's not customer service service yeah, yeah. um I, I think we also have to make clear that um bomb threats are not the way to properly oh, schedule your flights. No. Ohio man called in bomb threat so he would not miss United Airlines flight. Ohio man who called in a bomb threat to Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport so he would uh, avoid missing his flight was sentenced Thursday to four months in prison in order to pay a fine. 40-year-old allegedly man, made... fuck you. 40-year-old... Everybody else at the airport. Uh, forty-year-old allegedly made forty years old. Good God, made the false report because he was worried he was going to miss his flight. In addition to jail time, Carter's been ordered to pay seven thousand seven hundred dollars in restitution to United Airlines for the canceled flight. Which, okay, now if that's all he has to pay, that's kind of make. 
That's like that. Well, that's seven thousand seven hundred. That's like seven tickets. Let's be real here. That's the price of maybe international. Yeah. Yeah, that's my seven tickets. Um. So he that that if he had remained to pay the the tickets of everyone on that flight. And that's the thing. Like, oh, you were you weren't gonna make your flight. Everybody didn't make their flight now. Yeah. Because of you. Yeah. See, how it works is... Are you God? Did you cure cancer? Do you have the solution for world hunger that you need to get on that flight? No? Then fuck you! You're not more important than everybody. Plan better, set an alarm. See, how it works is, if you miss a flight, if a flight doesn't go when it's supposed to go, that flight is canceled. And let's be... Gener- if, if they're generous and put you on the next flight... You are competing with everyone who should have been on your flight yep. for a seat on the next flight. Welcome to the airline hunger games. So you are even more you are even less likely to get on your flight thanks to your fucking bomb throw. See, if you had just showed up late and begged them to reschedule you and been very pathetic, they would have tried to put you on the next plane. And you know what? You might have gotten on there. Depending on the airline. Sometimes they will. Like, if you really give them a good sob story, they'll Just try and work with you. Be nice to the airport lady. Be, 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 you know, be kind. And they'll be like, okay, we'll put you on standby for the next flight. How is and that would have been fine. But no, this son of a bitch has or to... Get your fucking shit together and get to the airport. Yeah. I live my entire fucking life 15 minutes late. <laughs> I am 15 minutes late for everything. I'm a horrible person. I know this. It's irresponsible. I know. I try really hard. Unless Dan is there to get me out the fucking door, I live my whole life 15 minutes late. (laughs) I don't fuck around with the airport. No. Because then you don't go where you're going. And it helps that most of the time I fly with Dan and he's like, and when I'm running around being like, where's my charger? It's already in the bag. Okay, I need a water. Thirty in the bag. Let's 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 go. Just it's because I know who I marry. He does. It used to be, you know, you you'd have to you'd worry about you'd miss your flight because of weather or because of 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 problems with the with the airplane. Now it's like, sorry, you're gonna miss your flight because some dumb shit called in a bomb threat. Because some fucking douchebag thought he was gonna be late, and he's more important than you are. He's more important than you. Oh yeah. Um, so that's, that's our first what the fuck. Too many people these days think that everybody else is just fucking extras in their movie. Like, they're the only real person in the world. I blame Elon. Everybody else are just NPCs in the video game. I blame Elon Musk and his everything's a simulation bullshit for that. Which is pretty much just an excuse to be a sociopath. But let's move on. Speaking of other methods to cause you to miss your flight. Um, this one, God bless it, at least they're original. British Columbia man arrested after inflatable sex toy sent into Vancouver airspace. Okay. (laughs) Oh, like not on a plane. No. Oh, God. Yes. A man could face charges after allegedly sending a blow-up doll into flight paths at Vancouver Harbor. West Camp Vancouver Police Department said two men at Ambleside Beach were filming a video on July 3rd with, quote, an adult-sized and shaped inflatable with 10 large helium balloons attached to it. The officers believe the release of the inflatable posed a hazard to aircraft entering or leaving the harbor area. Yeah, that's, uh, you, like, you got, even if you want to release balloons at your wedding, you got to get a permit for that shit. Yep. Because a balloon will take down an airplane. Yeah, it goes into the... Sucked into the engine, goodbye airplane. Yeah. Like, you, you can't just release balloons. It's not a thing you can do. Yeah, you can't just let anything go into a flight path. But you know what? It gets... I imagine a sex doll would really fuck up an airplane because it wouldn't shred like a balloon will. Mommy, what's that out the window? Oh, fuck. I'll tell Mommy, you when you're old. The lady is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what makes it even better? You know what makes it even better, Tara? 
A YouTube prankster under the name Brody TV claimed responsibility for the incident. Brody TV also tweeted he still intends to post the video, even though he got arrested. Just wanted to let everyone know that in Canada, you must have no fun. You know, I've had a lot of fun in my life. I think I've had a pretty fun life. Yeah. And it's never involved releasing a sex doll into the friendly skies in no. a sort of weird inflatable rapture. Yes. And yet somehow I have managed to experience fun. I mean, I've never been to Canada. Maybe the definition of fun is different. Maybe you literally can't have fun in Canada without an airborne sex doll. Yeah, you know, I, I this week the phrase. I look forward to your comments. This week, a phrase I hate is you just don't you just hate fun. That's popped up yeah. again. And you yeah. know what? When I think when I hear someone say you just hate fun, this is the kind of person I think of. Yeah. This yeah. is the kind of asshole. Well, you just don't like fun. Everybody thinks different things are fun. Some people think babies are fun. Some people think getting stepped on by women in large boots is fun. Some people think playing billiards is fun. Some people think putting stuffed animals on their husband on the internet is fun. But That's why there's 31 flavors. Yeah, it, fun does not involve fucking with goddamn air traffic routes because i'm gonna have to fly through canada god damn it i don't want to uh excuse me ladies and gentlemen we will be taking the plane down because uh there is a sex doll flying off the wing of your plane if you look out the window to the right you can see a sex doll you teach your children wrong anatomy oh <sighs> and there's a lot of of entitled shit this week. Here's even more. Oh, we're just going all the way through it. Um, I've broken down on the interstate once in my life, and it was it was a mortifying experience, especially. There it sucks. But one of the first things I did, even as my car was rattling and wheezing, was pulled over out of everybody's way. That's, if you have the opportunity, yeah. Yeah, that that's like like if your car is if your engine just is, doesn't just explode. And you're able to, yeah, you get the fuck out of the way. This, this, not, no, what? M1 breakdown driver, quote, had somewhere to be. A motorist left a broken down car on a busy motor ca motorway carriageway because, quote, they had somewhere to be. Vehicle was abandoned in the southbound, on the southbound M1 between junctions 35 and 34 near Sheffield. Highway, uh, Highways <laughs> England took to Twitter to the incident saying, broken down car in lane one. The owner abandoned it, telling us they had just left it there and they had somewhere to be. You know, I often get on the highway just for the sheer pleasure of it. I don't have anywhere to be. I just really like driving on the fucking New Jersey highways. <laughs> So I'm sure that all of the other cars in that picture are the same way, and they don't have anywhere to be. They just really enjoy driving on the highway for fun. Everybody has somewhere to be. It's, I, motherfucker. This, you, for one, he's the amazing good luck that someone did not plow into that fucking car. Unless you were late for tea with the fucking queen. <laughs> I don't hear it. Yeah, that's one of those those instances where you could say, no, sorry, got to set to see the queen. And they'll be like, yeah, Unless okay. Unless your that's... wife was giving birth at tea with the queen. <laughs> I don't want to fucking hear it. That sounds like a very un uncomfortable tea time, Tara. Probably, yeah. What sort of bickies do you serve to a birth at the Queen's tea time? British people are professionally uncomfortable. <laughs> Lady fingers? Is that is it professionally? They They're uncomfortable. That's their talent. Uh, I just... I, oh, fuck. Yeah, for what? I... I'm in a position where, you know what, I want my she car... would pick you up, because she does drive a Land Rover, and she drives that Land Rover like a fucking boss. 
I'm in a position where I'm I want my car to last as long as humanly possible because I am not made of money. Yeah. I would no way in hell would if my car broke down, I would just leave it there and be like, it'll be fine. I mean, if there's a shoulder, sometimes you do what you have to do, you know, like if there's nothing else, you if you can't get a tow truck or something. Sometimes you do what you fucking have to do if you have to go to a gas station because you ran out of gas, whatever. But if there is a shoulder, you don't just leave your car on the road <laughs> because you're going to wreck that car. And more importantly, you're going to hurt somebody. You enti- just entitled. And somebody is going to be in the car that hits it. Well, we have uh, we have even more entitlement Olympics from uh, Wisconsin. Uh, got a great contender for this year. Um, really up and comer. Looking forward to seeing what she does next year. Um, and we've got video. Let's uh, let's show everybody. Um, bring this around. Uh, here we go. Uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Let's have a nice look. Look there. There's a bicyclist avoiding both of the warning reps and falling into the gap. Oh! On the drawbridge. There's a reason those gates are there, you fucking moron. Video of a 37-year-old Wisconsin woman riding her bike into the open span on the Racine Street Bridge. As the street is coming the fuck up, where were you going? Video shows the warding gates going down to stop traffic. The bridge was being opened to let boat traffic from the fireworks show pass through. The woman rides the open gap between the warning gates, almost crashing before falling into the opening bridge gap. After a short time, bystanders got out of their cars and rushed to help the woman out of the opening. Um, woman was taken to the local hospital, treated primarily for facial injuries. So she's fine. The bridge was already rising. It's, I mean, Where are you going to go? You I mean, evil can evil that motherfucker? Yeah, it's... Bike? I don't think you are. That, that, this is not going to go how you want it to go. Like, what the fuck was step two of the plan? Oh, if they see me, they'll just bring it back down. No. No. No, bitch. That's not how life works. And, you know, this is one of those instances where we're like, everything's going to be automated. And we're talking about how robots are going to take. This is one job you can't automate. Because people are this stupid. Because she would get squished. Yeah. Yeah. If this was automated, she'd crack. You'd have you'd have you'd have people jelly. Did you, did you ever used to have the fun factory with from Play Doh when you were a kid? We weren't allowed to have Play Doh. Play Doh. My mom was afraid we'd eat it. Well, this is this is this is the Play Doh Fun Factory, the live we game. We had a lot of classic toys. We didn't have Lego because we could have choked on it. Um, we didn't have Play Doh because we could have ate it. I didn't have a Tic Tac till I was a teenager because my mom thought we would choke on them. Like, my mom had this thing. It looked like a glass with water in it that you had tipped so that the water was forming like half a triangle. Mm -hmm. And whatever the toy was, you put it in the glass. And if it didn't stick out the top, the child couldn't have the toy because it was a choking hazard. (laughs) And that's if, if if it didn't come out of the glass... We couldn't have it. I'm willing to wager your mom had a much le- lived in a time with less safety conscious shit and did a lot of things that my prob- mom told me when she was a kid they used to pop tar bu- bubbles in the street in the summer for fun. Like the tar on the on the street would melt and bubble and they would go out and poke it and <laughs> so yes, <laughs> but I did not have a bad childhood. But this is why my sisters and I tried to kill each other a lot. I think. Because we had no choice. <laughs> how 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 do you get in this situation and think, oh, those those flashing lights aren't for me? Right. I'm They're special. Not me. I'm I'm the special person. I'll be fine. You're you're <laughs> the the guy that called in the bomb threat. That's how. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody else are just extras in my movie. <sighs> And if I'm not looking at them, they don't exist. There is a lot of mass transit this week. Because we're not done. So, all right. So, flying. 
full of assholes. Driving, full of assholes. Biking, full of assholes. What about mass transit, you say? Surely that is oh, no. a way... I, I live in the New York metro area. That is full of assholes. Include... Oh. Including this one. Serial subway surfer arrested after being caught riding outside train for the third time. Hey, shout out to the guy in the Mets hat in the picture, though. <laughs> our, our main picture just went down with hand, foot, and mouth disease. New York PD says the subway surfer who was videotaped riding on the outside of a C train last week has been arrested. It's not safe. This was at least the third time he's been caught doing so, leading one to wonder, does he know something we don't know? Isaiah Thompson. I mean, inside does often smell like either vomit or urine. But that's better than dying. Isaiah Thompson, 22, was arrested on Thursday, has been charged with reckless endangerment and disorderly conduct. The most recent subway surfing incident, please tell Gothamist. This is at least the third time over the last year he was caught riding on the outside of the train. Was previously arrested in March and November of 2017, was hit with similar charges. But like, why? I it's and look, here here's here's video. Here we go. There he is. Just hanging on to the side of the fucking train. Why? Like you do. I mean, I gotta think he only pulls that shit on the local and not the express. Because the express would go way too fast. Like, you'd be blown off. I mean, why the... Why the... I, you can tell it's New York because dude in the Mets hat, not a fuck to give. Doesn't care. Doesn't care. This is... And, and, okay. How do I turn this off now? It's making noise. There we go. <laughs> The guy in the Mets hat's just like, yep, another day in the Big Apple. I, I I'm just, New York. Nobody gives a fuck. I just... But like, why? What's the thrill of this? And it's, it just walks off like this. But one of the things going on here is you're making... You potentially are... are the stream went down. Oh, uh, which one? Um, I'm on Ustream, and it's just the logo. Hmm. Well, Vaughn's still working. Hey. We'll have to talk about this in a little bit, but... No, anyway, th just the, the annoying bit about this is... Y y just, you have the potential of... It's not about not paying for the ride, because you don't pay when you get on the train. Right. You pay when you, you pay get on the train. into the station. So you have already paid, unless you're a turnstile jumper, and they've really cracked down on that shit. Like, he, he paid. Because you pay to get into the station, not on the train. Once you get into the station, you can, you can ride the fucking subway all day yeah. for one ride, if you just don't come above ground again. Uh, all right, hold on a second. We're having glitches. I'm assuming it's storm related. Oh, do you have a storm? Yeah. We yeah. have on off all day. Both Vaughn and YouTube are being a little glitchy there. Well, I could show you Sam Winchester since I showed you Dean. This is Sam Winchester. He has floppier hair and a different shirt, and that's pretty much how you tell them apart. Because <laughs> they both have the same knife. Uh... I can't do the kitty clip because it'll upset Peggy. You can. She'll probably be running in. <gasps> I got your favorite! <laughs> I got the Mippo! There we go. Are we back now? I do not have Castile and Crowley. I only have Sam and Dean, and they're little. They're tiny because they're keychains. All my full size pops are back there. Now it's both streams are down. Yeah, cause we had a glitch. Now, yeah, it seems like you streams is going to be pain tonight. 
Awesome. Good times. And it also seems like everybody's refreshing the page and refreshing the page and refreshing the page because they're but don't not... do that. Don't do that. You're not helping. Uh, we we could have sing along. No. Yeah, it's it's jumping up and down. It's obviously not on my end because Vaughn is is still mine. So it's. Yeah. What else can I entertain you? Oh, I can show pictures of the cats. One of my friends at the shelter made me the sweet calendar with all the cats. That's that's Simba. And that's some of the other cats that live with Sim that used to live with Simba. Uh, that's that's Simba in a bed that I bought him while he was at the shelter. He loved it. Let's see. I don't have any pictures of Peggy and Dottie in here. I feel like I'm not giving equal time. It's not fair. How is my foot doing? It's better. It's healing. You got some serious teeth, though. Okay, are they? Are we back? I think we're back now. I'm told Vaughn is fine. Oh, yes. Yep, Ustream is back. All right, we can continue. God damn it. Hello. God damn it. I'm going to have to... Yay, editing. Yay, live. Live, everybody. Why do you keep refreshing the page? Why? It refreshes the chat as well. What's wrong with you? Oh, is that why I'm seeing so-and-so join the chat room? So-and-so join the chat room. So-and-so yep. left the chat room. Um... Yep. You're, you're not... Guys, come on. Why do you do oh, this? Why do you do this? Stop refreshing the page. You're just bouncing in and out of the chat room. What the? Not helping. Not helping. <sighs> oh, they don't get help then. That's a you and me joke. That's true. Peggy shoves her face in everything you're doing all the time. So... We joke. She's just like, helping! Helping! We got one more story this week, and I guess this is more conventional. This is actually kind of a relief. Oh. So we naked have or poop? Naked. <laughs> naked. This one's a little bit of a relief. Um, what is it? Was it Madeline Albright who said there is a special place in hell for women who do not help women? Yes. Um, she got a lot of shit for that. I, I don't know quite how this qualifies. Um, naked woman attacked another woman with mailbox poll. Oh. Oh. I think that qualifies. I think you get to go to the special anti-feminist hell for that, maybe. Austin, Texas. A woman is facing charges after a bizarre alter altercation with another woman in Northeast Austin on Monday morning. Um... Police received a 911 call about a naked woman beating another woman with a steel pole. An and that were... wasn't just the latest pay-per-view from WWE? <laughs> oh, this, that will get you comments. That will fucking get you comments. I know. They're going to be so mad. And I don't care. <laughs> when officers arrived, they found a suspect identified as 40-year-old Andrea Presley standing nude in the street, holding a pole, and screaming at people. Police say a man in his yard also had a shotgun pointed at Presley, who he said was acting aggressively on his property. Well, he's not wrong. Yeah. Listen, I understand that pole dancing is a growing... <laughs> it's not a door-to-door -door activity. <laughs> Like, this isn't a bring it to the people activity. You got to bring the people to you to see your sweet pole aerobics and, and acrobatics. I understand it's a really good workout. I get it. But you, you can't bring it to the people. They got to come to you. When officers spoke to the victim and other witnesses, Presley, they say Presley randomly approached the victim and told her she was going to kill her, quote, because of her cousin. Witnesses okay. say Presley then took a mailbox and threw it at the victim, striking her in the head. 
the victim Which, says, by the way, makes it a federal offense. <laughs> you don't get to fuck with mailboxes. The victim says she used pepper spray to defend herself. That's when Presley grabbed the steel pole and hit her multiple times. According to an affidavit, the victim suffered pain and cuts from being hit with the mailbox and pole. Yeah. I mean, she's not fucking Luke Cage. Okay. I kind of grasp what happened here a little bit. Not not quite entirely. Why naked? Why this Braveheart bullshit? What did her cousin do? <laughs> There's so many holes to be filled here. And they're not on the naked lady. <laughs> That's one for the scrapbook. <laughs> what happened here? I don't know. How how did this at what point was naked involved? That that's that's what I don't understand. This it's like I'ma beat that bitch up. And just to embarrass her, I'ma do it naked. <laughs> Nate, the day I was born, I'm going to get that bitch with her fucking cousin. That can't be in any way comfortable, though. I feel like naked is not a great way to get in a fight in general, especially outdoors. Yeah. I mean, that is that is a whole porn genre. Naked chicks wrestling each other. That is a thing. But they're in a ring in a controlled environment. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like getting in a fight on someone's lawn naked. I, I don't like that for the same reason I hated the scene from True Blood where, like, what's-his-name crawls out of his grave and fucks Anna Packin because that's gross. <laughs> and I don't need maggots in my vagina. <laughs> we took a detour here. Um, <laughs> maggots oh, in my vagina? It's more likely than oh, you think. this cough is back. You hear him? He has a little cough. Tara, you are jumping around like crazy here. I'm sorry. My, my baby has a call. If I gotta take him to the vet. Uh, I just, I, good God. I think we can all agree that nobody wants maggots in their vagina. <laughs> Would you please stop saying that, please? I don't think that's a controversial statement. Please, please, please. Just, can we, point made, okay? Okay. Uh, just this is some incri this is some She Hulk shit. Just, I mean, they say keep Austin weird. That's pretty fucking weird. Rip your clothes <laughs> off. Job for the culture. Just ripping your clothes off, breaking off a mailbox, throwing it at people, swinging the. Yeah. This is some She Hulk shit. I don't think this... she pulls her clothes off on purpose, though. No, no, no. I just, oh my god. <laughs> there are, I want to read police reports. I want to read the, the police reports from all of these stories. Just, just, to, the ad, just to see how they tried to, to. Can you even imagine being these cops and pulling up on this scene? All right, we have it. We have a, we have a domestic disturbance. What the fuck? <laughs> And she, a naked lady with a pole, or screaming a guy with a shotgun. There's a mailbox in the middle of the street. What happened here? Don't don't forget she was naked and screaming. Yeah. So that did a David Lynch movie explode? What happened? <laughs> she won blue velvet. That was way out of tune. Not I know. That but... day. <laughs> All right, so what have we learned? This the first thing we've learned this week is um, nobody wants maggots in their vagina. Some days just aren't going to make sense. I think is the lesson from that one. You you need to be aware. You need to be prepared that some days simply are not going to make sense, and that's some just days how it is. Glitch in the matrix, and <laughs> you just got to deal with that shit. All the NPCs in your game. Are gonna be fucked up. 
we've learned, yes, the subway might smell kind of bad, but there, get nose plugs. Don't ride outside the car. Yeah. You know, you can put, put here, quick tip, Vicks Vapor you know Rub, right here. Smell of urine? Dying. Dying, yeah, dying is kind of worse than the smell of urine. No, Vicks Vapor Rub, right here, works for coroners, works for the subway system. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Um, or you could just get a coffee and, you know, yeah. be, um, <laughs> we've learned, yes, the warning lights are for you. Even you, even the most you. important person in the world. The warning lights are for you as well. Um, we've, we've learned that, uh, um, you don't, if you have to leave your car, sometimes that happens. Just don't leave your car in traffic. Pull, pull it over. Pull over. Or you might come back and you don't have a car anymore. Yeah. You have an insurance claim. You have a mangled heap of twisted metal. We've learned that just because someone doesn't want you sending a fucking inflatable sex doll into the air traffic space does not mean they are adverse to fun. Yeah. That's, that's a really specific definition. A little bit of a niche. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, we've learned the bomb threat is not going to, to hold the place. They're not going to be like, oh, just wait till the bomb threat's over. Then we'll go. No, no. This isn't even like the first one we've had of those. No, it's not. We've had them for different reasons. We had the one where the guy called in the bomb threat to keep the people from going to the wedding. Yeah. Uh, we've had a couple of these. It's it's like what the fuck? I just stop it. Just stop it. I'm even you, the most important person in the world, has to get to the airport on time. I have to fly this week, Tara. <laughs> Good luck. I mean <laughs> I mean you're going to Canada. It's the land of polite people, maple syrup, and free healthcare. Yeah, and floating sex dolls. 